Christian Zerizi from Grave Fair Verita or Scar of Fig 30 Plus Bukasi. Have you ever wondered what is the one factor that can lead to serious health issues, such as vaccine immunity, high blood pressure, or the risk of heart disease? This is not just my opinion, the research proves it. So, do you know the answer? I think you'll be surprised. The answer is a lack of sleep. So, I have a question for you to think about. How many hours of sleep do you get on average each night? Is it enough to keep your body healthy? According to the American Academy of Sleep Medicine, AASM, and the Sleep Desert Society, the people aged 18 to 60 years should sleep for seven or more hours per night on a regular basis for ideal sleep health. Another study, studied by the United States National Sleep Foundation, that people aged 18 to 64 years old needs to sleep for seven to nine hours, while seven to eight hours is suggested for those 65 years of age and older. And what if you're a student like me? How much sleep do you need? According to the AASM, primary students are encouraged to sleep up to 12 hours per night. And if you're a teenager, you're also encouraged to sleep 8 to 10 hours per night on a regular basis so that your body going to be healthy. So, do you get enough sleep? Think about it. An interesting fact is that the Philips Global Sleep Survey in 2019 indicate that 62% of Americans do not sleep well, as well as many as 25 million of USA suffering from sleep apnea, a condition that is potentially life-threatening. But as an Indonesian, I had to disclose a sad fact from a survey in 2018 conducted by Licorice that only one out of three people in Indonesia sleep well regularly during weekdays, which is approximately seven to nine hours. But Indonesians tend to rely on revenge same time, where they sleep longer during weekends rather than on weekdays. During weekends, 55% of Indonesians sleep for seven to nine hours and around 15% sleep for more than nine hours. Many of us do not realize that sleep has big impact on us. Insufficient sleep is prevalent across various age group and is considered to be the public health epidemic, which is often unrecognized, unreported, or that has rather high economic costs. It leads to derailment of body system, leads to several chronic physical diseases, as well as a breakdown of cognitive function, root accidents, and increased workplace accidents. Headspace, a youth mental health foundation from Australia, said that if you sleep well, you'll have a better mood, a better concentration, and a better performance at school over and also can control overeating, which can in turn prepare, prevent obesity. A joint research in the ESA in 2018 has compiled the manifestations about insufficient sleep that greatly impact on the following condition. Number one, sleepiness and microsleep. Sleepiness makes you less productive, while microsleep is associated as one of the determinant factors of traffic accidents. Number two, tiredness and fatigue. Because you do not regain enough energy to think and to act properly. Number three, lowered immune system. As host on infectious illness and is commonly related to the upper respiratory tract infection. So in short, if you sleep less, you'll get influenza easily. Number four, obesity. People who sleep less tend to consume more food to sustain an additional wakefulness in the long run. When food is easily accessible, 
Consumption often exceeds the required limit. And if you ask me, am I obese? No, I'm not obese, but I'm just a little fat, not obese. There's the difference between a little fat and obese, okay? Number five, increase the risk for diabetes. Insufficient sleep causes insulin resistance that will make our body unable to digest sugar and carbohydrates properly. Number six, increase risk of migraines. Number seven, increase the risk for cancer. Insufficient sleep, including deep sleep disruption, might be related to an increased risk of cancerous tumor formation. Number eight, increase cardiometabolic stress and cognitive impairments for people who work at night. Number nine, lack of sleep is linked to symptoms of depression, such as feeling down, hopelessness, irritability, suicidal thought, or consumption of alcohol or other drugs. Headspace suggests that every hour of sleep you miss at night, there will be a 14% increase in the risk of getting an unpleasant emotion or feelings. Number two, 68% increase in the risk of feeling sad and hopeless. Number three, 42% increase in the chance of suicidal thought. 58% increase in the chance of suicidal behavior. And last but not least, 23% increase the chance of using alcohol, tobacco, or marijuana. Late sleepers who sleep really, really late at night and do not wake up until the afternoon to compensate the late night beginnings may have delayed sleep phase syndrome or the SPS and are at an increase risk of developing insomnia and depression. Very short sleepers who sleep really short, only about five hours every night, are more likely to experience the long-term mental health issues rather than the people who get enough sleep. Well, on the other hand, if you sleep for too long, you'll find it hard to wake up in the morning or still feel tired during the day. Something else might be going on. Sometimes you wonder, was kids in the way of a good night's sleep. There might be biological or environmental factors. Biological factors is related to PBT or changes in our body clock, which can be caused by our sleep routines. And environmental factors is related to social pressure, school or university workload, the use of electronic devices, consumption of caffeine, alcohol or other drugs, as well as family conflicts. Of course, another factor is travel. One of the great impacts on our sleep patterns is jet lag. Jet lag results when we, we travel through different time zones. Our circadian rhythm, the mechanism in our brain that tells us when is the time to sleep and to wake up, it speaks to our, our home time zone. And there is a misalignment between the time in our home and the time where we are. The National Sleep Foundation said that jet lag usually lasts for a few days, but can persist up to a few weeks until the person's circadian rhythm is being synchronized with the local time. What if you have trouble falling asleep? You lie on a bed's edge and soon you'll drop off. No, no, I'm only joking, but seriously, if you have trouble falling asleep, you must solve the cause of your problem. Here are a few things that you can try for a good night's sleep. Number one, go to bed and get up at the same time each day, including weekends. You may try not to take naps during the day, as it can change your body routine. Number two, keep your bedroom quiet, dark, and at a comfortable temperature. The light from screens and lamps can stop your brain producing the chemical melatonin, which is important in helping you to get to sleep. Sleeping in a bright room can make a person do not get rapid eye movement sleep 
REM sleep. And REM sleep is beneficial for learning, improving memory, and improving mood. Number three, remove all electronic devices from the bedroom. The electrical wave and sudden sound may interrupt your good night's sleep. Number four, treat your mind so that it associates bed with being asleep. Working, studying, watching TV, or being online in the bed can cause your brain to associate bed with being alert and awake. Number five, avoid large meals or alcohol before bedtime. Yeah, it might make you sleepy, but your digestive system will be very active, which is something that prevents a good night's sleep. Number six, avoid caffeine, alcohol, energy drinks, or suffering after lunchtime. And caffeine will help you to stay awake, while energy drinks and sufferings contains a lot of sugar that will make your body feel more energized. Number seven, be active during the day, so that at night you'll be tired and easy to fall asleep. Exercising is one of a good way to be active during the day, but nevertheless, do not do exercise last thing before going to bed, because it can keep you awake. And last but not least, do not use sleep medication. It may help you in the short term, but it has a number of side effects, including kidney failure. And hey, who wants to get a kidney failure? Just from the sleeping pills, right? Now, I think you'll reconsider your decisions regarding to sleep. Now that I have explained horrible, horrible, horrible facts about bad sleep routine, of course, a good sleep routine combined with a good diet, regular exercise, and drinking enough water, you'll gain the chance of living a healthy life. A healthy life means a more joyful life, because you don't need to suffer from physical and mental health diseases. When you sleep well, you will gain enough energy to do your daily activity, studying at school or working at the office. And also, you'll have the focus to think logically and decide what is right to do. And also, you're going to be in a better mood for you co-workers, and fellow students and teachers. Remember of the words from Thomas Zetter, sleep is the golden chain that binds our health and bodies together. I am Kevin Christian Zanussi. Thank you for listening. And don't forget, sleep well tonight. <laughs>